We cross over now When I lift my hands When I open my mouth When I move my feet I cross the veil I cross the veil Into the throne room of God Here I come Lord Come on say here I come Lord Here I come Amen Good morning New Image Church How y'all doing? Hey Why don't you stand to your feet all over this place And welcome the presence of the Lord in this sanctuary All right, all right. I trust you guys have had an awesome uh, 4th of July weekend. Anybody in this place had a good time this weekend? All right. Maybe some of you walked in a little bit tired this morning. That's all right. We're going to get you pumped up. You guys ready to sing about freedom? I love this country, what it represents. I love the freedom that every single one of us have. Such an awesome blessing it is to live in this country. Do you believe that? But more importantly, the freedom that comes with Christ Jesus. You know, you were once bound up in sin and in chains. You were bound up. Do you believe that? Maybe you've got friends and family that you know that are bound up with addictions, that are bound up in sin and shame. Well, listen, we're going to sing about their freedom. We're going to testify about our freedom. We're going to sing about the freedom that comes with Christ. Is anybody in this place ready? Hallelujah.
Sometimes we take for granted the liberty and the freedom that we have even to lift our hands or clap our hands or any of the movements that we make. There are people that, that struggle with something that some of us find so easy to do. And there was a time in my life where when people said, raise your hands or clap your hands, it was uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. And I... I got frustrated, and a lot of you know more details to the story, but there comes a time when you're no longer inhibited by what anybody else thinks or even what song is played or anybody around you. You just find a freedom to celebrate how good God is to you. Amen. And folks, I want to tell you, that's a beautiful thing. There are times in your life where you got to praise him, even when you don't feel like it. That's right. That's right. I would say most of the time, you're going to wind up praising him when you don't feel like it. That's right. We don't all wake up shouting hallelujah in the morning. Amen. Right. You can drink a gallon of coffee and still not be able to say praise the Lord. I mean, some days it's just... It's just not there, but, but God is so good and he's so merciful. And sometimes we just go ahead and lift that hand to him and, and we find his presence filling our hearts, and filling our lives. And there's something powerful in, in drawing close to God. And the Bible says when we do that, he will draw close to us. And too many times we... We say, God, draw me to you. And God's like, no. You come to me. And then I will come to you. And that's the critical key for us, even in a corporate setting like this this morning. We've got to make the first step. And we do that by our intentional praise and worship and, and seeking and praying and reaching and and then God just just comes. And before long, 
There's no one in the building that can deny I'm in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And so this morning, before I ever get up to preach, and I've got something to share with you, but before I ever get there, I'm asking God to cause us to just seek Him, wow. reach for Him, expect Him to the point that none of us in this room, none of us, an atheist can walk in and say, yeah, but I feel Him today. I know I'm in the presence of God today. An agnostic could walk in and say, but I'm in the presence of God today. A Baptist can walk in and say, I'm in the presence of God today. An Episcopalian can walk in and say, I'm in the presence of God today. A Pentecostal can walk in and say, I am in the presence of God today. There's something about a people that recognize that they're standing on holy ground because God Almighty, the creator of all things, is in the house. The difference maker, the way maker, the provider, the healer is here. I want him. I want him. I want him. Even if I've got to be the one to take that first step and reach. I want to worship God with our giving. If you're here this morning and would like to participate, we'd love for you to participate. But this is an hour and a moment where our church partners, people that are a part of this ministry, they give unto the Lord the tithe and the offerings and to missions and various things. Some of us give by text. If you're interested in texting to give, you can text the number 84321. Once again, that is 84321. And you'll be able to set it up. It's very simple. Uh, more and more people are using that method, and I found it to be very easy for me and my family, and that's what we do. Uh, you can still write a check. As far as I know, the bank's still taking checks. And uh, you can give online. You can do about anything you want to. There's a debit credit card machine out front. You can, you can have guest services help you. But the most important thing is, is that you do it cheerfully. Mm -hmm. Don't go to that credit card machine mad about it. Right. Don't text to give frustrated about it. You're going to rob yourself of a great blessing. Do it cheerfully. Whatever you're going to do, do it to God cheerfully, thankfully gratefully because this is a moment he's not looking for reluctance he's looking for obedience with a joyful heart can we just can we just pray together and then at the close of this prayer just come forward and give our gifts to the lord and and let's focus on just reaching for him these next 10 minutes and believe god to fill this place father in the name of jesus i i lift my phone god because i text to give but i i want to thank you lord for the opportunity to give and and I want to thank you, Father, that everything that I give wasn't even from my own making, God. It came from you. Lord, I'm really not giving anything of me. I am simply letting go of what is already yours. And so, God, I ask you to take this that you gave to me and receive it back. And, Father, know that my heart is full of joy and is very excited to do this today because I know, Lord, that you are my provider. You are my way maker. You're more than enough, God, and you're so much, Lord. Even when it doesn't make sense, I've seen your hand move, and I praise you for that today, God. What an honor it is to sow into your kingdom, God, and honor your name today. Receive the gifts of your people, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Come on, let's worship together.
Please remain standing as you go back to your seat. Continue worshiping with us. Sing this right here with me. And I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Everybody, everybody say, I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains, no chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Everybody say, I'm free. In Christ I'm free. In Christ I'm free. No chains are holding me. One more time, say I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free. In Christ I'm free. In chains are holding me. Chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. I hear your chance. Come on, sing. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free. Listen, was blind but now. That's who I'm meant to be. Sing that again. Say I'm free indeed. I'm free. In Christ I'm free. Was blind but now. That's who I'm meant to be. Sing it one more time. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free.
Anybody in this house who's not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus? Who's not ashamed to experience the Holy Ghost? Who's not ashamed to testify of His greatness? Oh, I need some help in this place. Come on and open your mouth. Come on and open your mouth and give him praise. There's just one or two who can give him praise. Right now is the time, it's the time. Yeah. Come on, Miss Brittany, step up and sing this song.
morning About how good you've been to me, Lord Hey, you're giving me a job You're giving me a family Hey, you've been good to me, Lord You've been so good to me, Lord I just want to testify Somebody ought to testify Church, sing it out. Sing for freedom, 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 freedom,
Come on, stay right there. There is freedom. Come on, would you be so kind to lift one hand to the Lord? Lift both hands. Father, in this place, the act of lifting a hand or both of our hands to you is an act of surrender. <laughs> the giving up, God, brings so much freedom in our life. So much of what we endure in life, God, we have to fight for and hold on to and scratch and claw and just try to get by but today God we just want to empty our hands we just want to empty our hands and just let go of everything that we held on so tight and just find that freedom in your spirit and in your presence right now Come on, let's sing it softly one more time. Just let go. Freedom raised. Freedom raised in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. Falling on it. Father, take this word and speak into our lives. Plant good seed, powerful seed, and bring forth powerful results. We're confident that you will in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I pray that this morning you've already began to ponder the liberty that is only found in Christ. There are a lot of religions in this world, but none of them provide true freedom. They enslave. They require things that humans are incapable of providing to satisfy a God that doesn't even exist. Our God paid all the price. And he asked you to trust him for it. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Thank you for being here today. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share with you the word that God has given me. And I'm very grateful for your time. I realize you could be sitting in any church in the upstate of South Carolina, but you're here. And I'll never take that for granted. I'm very grateful and very honored that you would give me a chance to speak and to share. And it is my hope that the Holy Spirit will do something that's way greater than any words that I typed on paper. And I believe he'll do that. He always has, and I believe he always will. A few weeks back, I started a series titled Witchcraft in the Church. And we have addressed a number of areas of witchcraft outside of the church. And I told you that we were working backwards. We are we're certainly getting to the church, but, but we're seeing how the enemy has worked and how he's navigated in order to come into the ultimate place he desires to be, and that's here. And he's used other areas basically to perfect his strategy. And he's used those areas as training grounds just to get to the ultimate place, and that is to stop the church of the living God in the church of the living God to be found walking and operating in witchcraft, inviting judgment on itself. We refuse to allow that to happen. In the recent weeks, we've learned that rebellion is witchcraft in the eyes of God. Rebellion is an issue with God. It's something that he takes very seriously. Rebellion to God's authority, the Bible says, it invites judgment into our lives. When we rebel against authority, we are inviting judgment upon ourselves. God's not doing it. We're doing it to ourselves. 
the rebellion we see in the world also manifest in the home. Up until now, we've talked about uh, civil disobedience, civil authority, delegated authority, and, 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 and our government. Everything's been outside of the home. But today, I want to begin to walk through how the enemy has attacked the home, the family, your house, where you live. Everything that you're going through inside of the home. I want you to listen very carefully. The enemy has hated the family from the very beginning of time. The family has been under attack from the beginning of time. It's nothing new. The family being attacked is not a new strategy of Satan. The family has been under attack from the very beginning of time. When we read in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, and the word Genesis means the beginning, when you read in Genesis, the first family on earth consisted of Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. That made up the first family on earth. There was a man, there was a woman, and there were children. There was a husband, a wife, and children. It was the first family on earth. But out of that family, one was deceived by Satan. One rebelled against God's authority straight up. And one was a murderer. Meaning that the fourth one is dead. The first family on earth screwed it up. Big time. So if you're here today and you say, hey man, I ain't murdered nobody, you're probably doing a little bit better than Adam and Eve did. If your children are not incarcerated or in prison for murder, there's hope for you. The first family really screwed it up. Just as God delegated authority with Adam, God also delegated authority in the home. Now, for some of you, this message is going to challenge you. And for some others, it's going to minister to you and really help you. Today, because it's such a broad subject, I'm dealing with the ideal. And I realize some people will leave today and say, well, my circumstances are a little different and yours may be different, but it doesn't change the fact that this is the way God intended for your circumstances to be. This is God's plan for the family. The husband has a very important role. The man of the house. The husband is to rule his house under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The husband is to lead his house under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of men want to be the man and rule the house, but they don't want to submit to God first. You don't get to be the man unless you recognize and submit to the authority of the man. God's ideal plan for the family included, just as it did in the beginning, a husband, a wife, and children. That was the ideal, that was the plan that God had for humanity. Unfortunately, the enemy has attacked this institution, and unfortunately, many believers lied at their wedding ceremony. I need some water. Unfortunately, some lied to me. 
See, before I had the wedding ceremony, I said, well, why are you getting married? Oh, we just love each other so much. I just can't imagine living my life without this person in it. I'd rather die than not be with them. God wants to bless us and use us and, and God put us together. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, we love each other so much. Can you imagine any circumstance that would cause you to no longer be together? Oh, only death, only death could separate us. We're married till Jesus comes back or one of us die. Okay, okay, okay. You, you read the Bible. You know what to say. You know how many people lied to me? Well, you ain't got to be that quiet about it. I'm not talking about you specifically. You know how many people lied to God? Stood before Him and said, I'm going to become one with this person until death do us part. And then all of a sudden, they didn't feel like it anymore. I just don't feel in love anymore. Who gives a crap about how you feel? Let's just rewind back to what you promised. You made a promise to me. I'm going to be honest with you. I get mad when people lie to me. They never know it because I never call them up and say, you know what, you just pissed me off. I cannot believe you lied to me back 17 years ago. I don't tell them, but I get frustrated. Why lie to me? I didn't want to be a part of your charade. I wanted to be a part of something godly. I wanted to be part of something with some integrity. I wanted to be a part of something that, that was going to prove to the world that God's people know how to do it the right way. I don't want to be a part of something that everybody else in the world is doing. I want to be a part of something real, man. You say, well, that's awful hard against those of us that have have been divorced. Well, I'm just going to tell you something. I, I don't mean for it to, to be harsh to you, but the Bible says God hates it. My job this morning is not make you feel good or bad about the past decisions that you have made. There's actually reasons at times where people need to be divorced, but they're very rare. What I'm talking about is when all of a sudden your feelings and attitude and circumstances of life begin to dictate what is right instead of what God said. God intended for there to be a husband, a wife, and children. A broken home is a painful place for the entire family. A broken home is tragic. A broken home alters everything that God intended for the family to be. When you have a broken home, mothers start playing roles that they were not created to play. When you have a broken home, fathers begin to play roles that God never intended for them to play. And I got news for you. When you have a broken home, oftentimes children begin to play roles that is so unfair to them. They were not meant to be the dad or the man of the house. Your 12-year-old boy wasn't meant to be the man. It's a burden that he carries, and he carries because somebody's got to fill a role, and, and it's all because Satan has destroyed the very nucleus that God instituted from the very beginning. And the church doesn't take it as serious as it should. We take marriage lightly. We're hypocrites. I've had people that do not confess to serve the Lord Jesus Christ tell me when the church can get its crap together, then preach to me. Guess what? They're right. They're right. Come to God. God loves you. God will heal and restore your marriage. Well, why is 50% of the marriages in the church in divorce then? 
If God is so great, if God is so powerful, if God is so wonderful, why is half your church screwing around? Why is half your church in adultery? Why is half your church fornicating? Why is half your church living like the world? Why is your church in divorce court as much as we are? If you can't get your crap together, then why are you going to come preaching to me? Well, I'm preaching now. We do not respect marriage the way God intended for us to respect it. God intended that the family would be structured in many ways just like his church. And the authority over that marriage would be God himself. The order of the home, listen very carefully, the order of the home always begins with God. If your order does not begin with God, you are out of order. Man, I'm going to preach to myself this morning. I'm telling you, I will preach. Mm, Jesus, me and God are going to have church with or without you. The order begins with God, and then the next one in line is the husband. The man of the house, then the wife, and then the children. And when that order is out of balance, that house is in trouble. When this order is out of balance, because of rebellion, witchcraft is in the home. You say, well, who's rebellious? Let's start with the man. If he rebels against God and he doesn't make God the supreme leader and authority and covering over that house, that man has already invited rebellion into his house. Man, if you are not submitting to the authority of God's word, of God, the Holy Ghost, if you're not submitting to him, you are inviting rebellion into the house. Listen, ladies, you fall in line as well. If you are not submitting to your husband as to, to the Lord, you are inviting rebellion into your house. So if a man is inviting rebellion into the house and the woman is inviting rebellion to the house, don't call the pastoral care when your children are rebelling against you because because you're the one that brought the rebellion into the house in the first place. My God. Yeah, I'm going to preach. I feel God up here with me. He cares about this. You cannot operate and function the way God wants you to operate and function when you are bringing rebellion into the home. 1 Corinthians 11, 3, look at it with me. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. The man is the head of the house. He's the king of his castle. He is in, he is in godly authority over the home. Men, listen to me. You are supposed to be the king of your castle. If you're going to be a wimp and let somebody else step in and try to fulfill your role, you have got to get your crap together and go ahead and be a man in the house and stand up in the role that God has ordained you to walk in. You got to be the man of the house. You got to be an authority over your family. The man has great responsibility to fall in line with Jesus. The man has great responsibility to fall in line with God. God wants his, his son to be leading his family in the authority that God has given him. Man must submit to the authority of God. Man is responsible for providing godly direction for his family. He's responsible for providing a vision for his family. Man, you can't get with God without walking away with vision from God. Every time you spend intimate time with God, God's going to talk to you about your family. He's going to talk to you about what he wants from your family. He's going to talk about a vision for your family. Men, you should be providing a vision for your family. You say, well, my wife don't like it. I said, men, men, you should be providing a vision for your family. We're not taking a family vote on this. 
We hear from God. I don't stand up here and find out whether or not you like the sermon I'm preaching this morning. I talked to God and he said, this is what I want you to share. And it's my responsibility to share what God said. It's like Moses on top of the mountain. He had an encounter with the holy God and he came down and he told the people what thus saith the Lord God. We need some men in our generation that can get into a prayer closet with God. And when they come out, mama knows that man has been in the presence of the Lord and whatever the Lord says, we will do. Mm. Single ladies, if you're dating a man that doesn't have a vision for himself, why? What in the world are you messing around with a boy for? Talking about God give me a godly man and he don't even talk to God. If he can't live his life with a vision for himself, he cannot lead you. He cannot lead you. If he don't even know where he's going, what makes you think he's going to tell you and your children where to go and be in line with God? Quit wasting time on boys who need to grow up. Ask a man if you date him, what is your vision for your life? What has God said for your life? If he don't know the answer, tell him, hit me when you figure it out. Ain't got time to be playing with boys. God, I want a husband. You need a man that knows how to talk to God, knows how to get a vision for himself. So he can get a vision for your family. And if you're dating a man that's never even submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in rebellion in the first place. <laughs> man, Daddy, I might need you to stand up here, brother. I don't know what's happening. So many people come into church and start talking about how much they love the Lord, but they're dating the devil. And have convinced themselves that God's okay with it. No, he's not. He said, you've got no business living your life like that. You ain't got no business messing around with unbelievers. See, some of y'all, y'all don't forgot foundational truths. I'll change him. You ain't changing nothing. You're not changing anybody. You're not God. Ladies, I want to tell you something. You need to find, you need to alter your thinking on what's good looking. Man. Shoot, I, let me tell you how I'm serious. I, I'll sit down and preach. I ain't scared. <laughs> I might fall on my face, but I'm going to preach. Listen, if you are single, you are forbidden by Scripture to be dating unbelievers. Forbidden. Forbidden. Fornication is still sin. We just couldn't help ourselves. Well, you better start helping yourself. He said, well, man, you're just preaching all that whole, whole old stuff. Well, somebody needs to. If you're going to start messing around with people that are living half-hearted for God, don't come to me when your marriage is half-hearted to hell. You entered into that relationship going half-hearted to hell. And you want God to bless it. You entered into it out of rebellion. He said, I don't want you doing it. And then going to try to bring me or Pastor Mark or somebody in and say, come on, marry us. I don't want to marry you. I can't believe he wouldn't marry me. I can't believe. And for those of you who just want to shack up... For those of you that just want to shack up. Ladies, 
If you're paying any man's bills, you're a fool. I don't care what his abs look like. You have lost your mind. If those abs are that great, they better go start making some bank. The Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. Well, we're working on getting more. We ain't working on it no more. Go get married. Submit to God. Get your life in order. See, this is ideal. And I know some of you think, man, the world doesn't work like that. We're not talking about the world. We're talking about the called out ones of God. We're talking about the church of the living God. I know how the world works. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking about God's people submitting to the Lord. Witchcraft comes into the home because men have not guarded the house. They have no godly direction and the enemy comes in and he plants seeds of chaos and rebellion and men need to grow up and be a man and say no to sin and submit to the authority of God's word, submit to the Holy Spirit and lead their family in a vision that God has for them because I promise you, there comes a time you gotta fight for your family. comes a time you got to let the enemy know not in my house if you want to be the man of the house make sure you have a vision for the house make sure you go before God and find out what his will is for your family when God wanted to establish his will on earth who did he go talk to he went and talked to Adam He went and talked to Adam, and when he wants to establish his will in the home, he's going to go talk to the man. Ephesians 5, 21 through 24, uh, verse 21, it says, Submit to one another out of reverence uh, for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do uh, to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the, uh, of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their own husbands in some things. Y'all leave that up there for some of them precious wives. <laughs> I can already hear some of you thinking it so loud. Tell me to submit to everything. We'll be having sex seven times a day if I submit to him and everything. <laughs> Y'all laughing because it's true. <laughs> I can see a man now, but 4 30 in the afternoon. You know what, baby? I kind of like that pastor now. You know, I didn't know about him for a while there, but, you know, I'm starting to feel it. I, 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 I get it. That man told me about submit to me and everything. You know what's so great about God? Is that when you have a godly man who submits first to the Lord, most of the time the wife will be excited about submitting to that kind of husband. They will be thrilled to submit. You know why some women really struggle to submit to their husbands is because that's not what her husband is. They don't trust. They're afraid. They've seen poor decisions. They've seen 
poor dealings with finances. They've seen poor decisions. They've, they've, they've been through heartache and insecurity and fears and, and anxiety. And they've been through a lot of things because there's no vision and there's no, there's no godliness and there's no, there's no leadership by the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm here to tell you, men, if you want your wife to submit to you, as, as I know you do, she, she's looking for that kind of man. Now, now, ladies, you don't get to pick and choose if you're going to play your role correctly or not. You're responsible to God. What does it mean for a wife to submit to her husband? That's a really good question. Uh, you remember in Romans 13.1, we're going to put it up for you again. In Romans 13.1, it says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Y'all remember that scripture? I, I, I read it many, many times early on. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Well, guess what? It is the exact same Greek word when the Bible says that wives are to submit to their husbands. It's the exact same word. That military term, you remember I told you it was a military term that dealt with with the arrangement of troops in a division in a military fashion, it meant to literally subject yourself voluntarily. Y'all remember that? Well, it literally means that the wife voluntarily subjects herself under the leadership of her husband. And so, ladies, if your man doesn't look like what you want him and believe God's Word says, you need to be praying for him for sure. But but you go to him and you say, God told me I'm to submit to you. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to submit to you. But I want you to know what else God said. God also said that you're supposed to submit to him. And honey, I want to submit to you. And I'm going to do what God has asked of me. And I'm going to do it intentionally, and I'm going to do it willfully. I'm going to do it as, I, as unto the Lord. But I'm asking you to submit to the Lord the same way I submit to you. That's what you do. You don't go to him and tell him how sorry he is. You don't go to him and say, well, the pastor said I had to submit to you, and God's word said I had to submit to you, but I don't like it. And, and you're just going to have to be patient with me because I, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to work this out. See, that's not how you handle it. Not only is the wife to submit to her husband, but the children are to obey their parents. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Children are to obey their parents. Parents, listen carefully. You do not have to explain to your children why for everything. Well, he just don't understand. Okay. He's four. He's not going to understand. Well, I just believe that if we help them understand, it'll be so much easier on them. Your role is not to make it easy. It's to teach them to obey. Your child must learn that obeying you is more important than understanding you. They must learn that obeying you is more important than understanding you. And when you teach that to your child, you are laying the groundwork for their own relationship with God. We are to obey God regardless if we understand it. All of us have had moments with God where we may not have understood everything, especially early on in our walk with Him. 
He asks of us to do things that may not make sense and I don't understand, but it doesn't change the fact that God expects obedience to things that you may not understand. Why would you raise a child up and convince them that you only obey God when you understand it? Why would you ever lay a groundwork for a child to be rebellious against God because I don't understand it yet. That's not your role. When I was a kid, because I said so was an answer. Y'all remember that? But why? Because I said so. That's biblical. That's biblical. Why does your mom and daddy make you do that? I don't know, because they said so. And then some little kid's going to say, well, I wouldn't do it. But they, your child need to learn in your house. That's going to bring some consequences. I still believe in what the Bible says about if you, if you take that rod and, and, you, and you hide it and you don't do anything with it, uh, you, you unbiblical. Next time you go spank your child, I'm just, I'm just obeying the Lord. I'm just going to obey the Lord and just beat the crap out of you this morning. Bring me a broomstick. The crap's wrong with you, Baba. I'm just trying to obey the Lord, son. But I don't understand. It's okay. I'm still going to bust that tail. But Johnny's, I don't give a flip what Johnny said. He come over here, I'll beat him too. He said, oh, Pastor, you can't do that. Well, I was raised different. If I was keeping you, you was under my rules. If you don't like my rules, don't let your child stay with me. Because he might come home with a busted heart, some busted emotions. But if I say eat all your chicken nuggets, you're going to eat them chicken nuggets. I don't care if you got a water snot running down your face by the time you fit. You go eat them nuggets. Y'all, y'all too soft. <laughs> Children got to obey their parents. If they never obey you, you're setting them up for failure to ever obey God. Does the father have a lot of responsibility? Yes. Husbands, Ephesians 5, look at it with me, Ephesians 5. I'm going, I'm going to get, get this finished here real quickly. Ephesians 5, 25 through 28, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Pastor Blake, would you come, please? Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. One of the responsibilities that I have as a husband is to make sure that Kimberly, who I'm so grateful is with me today, I've got my son, my daughter, my white man. It's one of the best days of my life. But one of the roles that I play in the life of Kimberly it's my responsibility to build a pedestal for her she should not have to find her own pedestal I should build a pedestal for her 
Now, I know some of you are thinking, but why does she got to have a pedestal? Because she's a queen. She's royalty. She is a royal, God-created gift to a husband. And it's my job to help her get on that pedestal. My wife should never question my loyalty. She should never have to question my commitment, my devotion, my protection, my provision. If I'm going to tell you that she is a queen, then it's important that I make sure that she is a queen. That's my responsibility. And church, when I call her a queen, it's my responsibility to make sure that she doesn't look like a casual visitor. It's my responsibility to polish her crown. She should never have to polish her own crown. It's my responsibility to make sure that she has everything that she needs. It's my responsibility to make sure that when she's on that pedestal, that she's not the only one that looks good, but that she makes me look good. Because see, if she's there, and the shine is gone, and she appears to be casual, it wasn't her fault. It was mine. It was mine. And sometimes when God wants to make things right in the home, who did I tell you he's going to go talk to? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when the father starts talking, he's going to tell you, you better make her look better than that. Now, don't get this twisted. It's not about who can outbuy and provide and who can give them the most money. I ain't going to lie to you. Queen's expensive. And little baby queens, they expensive too. And somehow another little baby queens think they get to be the queen the rest of their life. Grant, that's your problem now. Would you come here? Kim, not you, Danny. Hey. Dang, boy. Calm down. You... you got a beard, dude. I'm not going to embarrass her. I already have, she said. Yeah, I am expensive, too. Um, there was a time that I let her crown fade and I didn't like what I was looking at and didn't understand that it wasn't her fault it's mine The way you honor God is how you appreciate the gifts He gives you. 
for the home. How the husband treats the wife lets God know how much you or I love him. How, don't get this twisted, but how you treat your pastor tells God how much you love him. It's a principle throughout scripture. But this woman doesn't have another man on this planet with the obligation to make her a beautiful queen. She can't run down the street and say, Jimmy, can you make me a queen that's beautiful? It's not my responsibility. It's Eric's. I cannot make you a beautiful queen. I can't do it. I can only make her a beautiful queen. But if you're married, God has given you a man. You said, boy, I wish he was here this morning duct tape his feet together and make him listen to the whole sermon. Because I know that every little girl wants to be a queen. And daddies always want their little girls to be that queen. Your father in heaven wants you to be treated with royalty and respect. There are times you sacrifice just to bless her. Just to bless her. One day, and I please don't make this about money, but one day I had $150 in my pocket. And, and, and I took that $150 and I handed it to her. She said, what are you, this is yours. I said, no, it's not. I want you to have it. I don't care if she rolled it and smoked it. I've seen her do it once. She didn't like it, but she a crazy queen. It was just simply an act of saying, honey, everything I need, I have. I just want you to have it. Do you know most of the time the wife would say, here, finish eating my chicken. They want you to have it. There's another piece on the counter if you'd like to have it. No, baby, you go eat it. No, I, I'm good. You go. They're always giving and little things like that. Men learn that the greatest way, greatest way to honor her is to respect her, believe in her, build her up, take your role and responsibility seriously. I know some of you think Kim and I have the greatest marriage in the world. And as far as I know, we probably do have the best marriage of anybody I know. But, but I'm not perfect. I'm not. She knows. I'm better than most now. You be careful. But I have to get before God. And I have to have a vision for that woman's life. Men, it's time for you to be a man about it. Quit making excuses and get before God. Wives, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. Children, if you've got children in here or if you're going to let them listen to this later, I don't know if I'd let them or not, but I, I tell them that they need to obey you and read the scripture to them. And if they say, why, I said so. But if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm a single mother. I'm having to be mom and dad. That's hard. You're all of a sudden being forced to play a role that was not ideal. I came from a single parent home. 
I was the oldest of three and I played the role of a dad in a time in my life where it was unfair to me. I didn't know how to do it and I made many, many mistakes. I corrected them. I spanked them. I literally walked out the life of a father. But I grew up resenting and being angry with a man that abandoned his role and he forced me to become something that was not my responsibility. Most of us grew up and have had responsibilities that were placed on us that were unfair to us. It is my prayer that at some point that God will give you everything you need, whether it's a husband or whether it's a wife, whatever it is you need, but it is critical that you do it the right way. Don't, don't say, God, I need a husband. I need a godly leader. I need a man that loves and submits himself to God because God will talk to him. I want you to stand with me. I want you to close your eyes. We're going we're gonna to get out of here shortly, but there's, there's just a few minutes of ministry that needs to take place because some of you here this morning, you want to be that kind of man. You want to be that kind of wife. You want to be that kind of family. You want these things in your life. You want to remove the rebellion from the house. Don't go home and try to change everything overnight. You'll wreck your whole family. The first thing you need to do is just get before God. Yeah. And get a vision for the house. And then sit down and talk to the family about a vision and why it's important that this is what we do in our family. The next thing your children need to see is how you treat the mama. If you're a single lady... Treat yourself with respect. Don't you ever feel guilty for doing something for you. Don't you ever sit there and feel guilty if you buy yourself something. Your children got enough crap. There's nothing wrong with you doing something for you. And you don't have to explain it to anybody either. Quit telling people you got these for free. I found these shoes on the side of the road and just thank God that they fit me. You let them believe they came from Neiman Marcus with a gold thread running through it. It doesn't matter what they think. You take care of you. Your children need to see mama took care of herself. Don't feel guilty. So many Single women feel like I got to give this to my child and that to my listen. You got responsibilities that so many will never understand. But occasionally, that forty dollars needs to go to something you need. There's nothing wrong with you finding somebody to watch the children, and you go do something for you. Quit living in this bondage. Your child's going to grow up and hate you or something. If you did something for you, they need to see the queen of the house yeah. is still a queen. Especially if you got a little girl. That little girl needs to know that her life is not hanging and hinged upon anything and anybody. She needs to know I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to be beautiful. I'm going to take care of me. I don't care what man thinks he's going to do something. I can take care of myself. I want your daughter to know she don't have to settle for some yeah. get by flunky. That's right. Ladies, respect your husbands. Find out what he needs and quit thinking you know what he needs and give him what he needs. Yeah, Talk to him about it. Baby, what do you need? What do you want? What matters to you? I don't care if you like it, it's for him. Appreciate him. The man does work, appreciate him. If he don't work, tell him you're going to tell God on him. And I'm going to talk to the father until he kicks your tail. My wife and I love you. 
I love every single mother. I've always had a very soft spot in my heart for single mothers because of the way I was raised. I've also been very proud of a dad who stuck it out. God loves you. And God wants to bless your family. I want you to close your eyes. If you're here this morning and there's something that needs an alignment in your life this morning to line up with God's word in your house, I want you to lift your hand. Ain't nobody looking at you but me and God. Just hold it up, man. It's cool. It's okay. It's a safe place. It's a safe place. I'm lifting my hand. I'm going to be, I, I've tried to be a good, I'm about to blow the woman's mind. I'm asking God to help me blow her mind. I want a crown so polished that I can't even hardly look at her without it, without putting on some sunglasses or something. She's just too bright. I want to adore her. I want her to feel like I'm too much. I want her to feel like she can do anything. I don't want her to feel like that because she's standing in front of you. I want her to feel like because I'm standing before God. God, I'm lifting my hand today because I want to be everything I said. But God, I'm lifting my hand for every single mother out there. I'm lifting my hand for every husband. Every, every husband that is struggling inside. God, he's angry. He's frustrated. He's tired. He's working his tail off. He's being mistreated and abused in the world. Maybe he's working for a company that doesn't respect him and appreciate him. Maybe he comes home and he's not appreciate. I pray for that man right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you to supernaturally go to him now. Heal his broken heart. Heal his life. Let him know that he is valuable. He is powerful, God. Let this man know that you're going to lead him and guide him. And you're going to strengthen him and make him an amazing king over his house. I pray for that wife, God. There are just dreams. That, could it be that God would give me a husband like my pastor described? Could I truly have a husband like that? God, show them that they can have something even better than that, Lord. Help them not to look to me as a standard, but God, to look to you as the standard for their family. Help them to not settle, God. I pray for that single mama that's fighting and struggling. She's doing it all. She's trying to figure it out, God. She's trying to be mama and daddy and aunt and uncle and grandma and grandpa. She's trying to do it all. She's trying to go to work, work two jobs. She's trying to make ends meet. She's trying. And God, she needs time for herself. She needs to know it's okay to do something for herself. I bless that single mother right now. In the name of Jesus. If you're a single mother, if you're a single mother, would you ask your neighbor to excuse you and come stand here at the front, please, real quickly? Shirley, where are you at? Come here real quick. Every single mother, please, if you'd just be so kind. Shirley, would you come up here? I want every, every mother just come stand right here together. I don't care how, how old you are, how young you are. I, I, I promise you, I'm not going to embarrass you. I just, I, I need you up here for a very important reason. to do something for you today for 
you specifically. I'm going to pray for you, but when we leave, I need you to stay right there because I want to speak to you for just a second, privately. Church, we're going to run Satan out of our homes, our communities, our churches, and the blessings of the Lord are coming to New Image Church. You listen to me. They're coming to your homes. They're coming to our community. I'm telling you now, articles are going to be written by the because of the blessings in the upstate of South Carolina. Other states around the nation are going to say, look what God is doing in the upstate of South Carolina. When we align with Him, He's going to pour out blessings like you ain't never seen before. You better get rid of all your crying and your depression and your discouragement about who left and who did what because baby, God's going to fill the house. He's going to fill it overflowing. He's going to cause people to have to get in line just to get on the property. I'm telling you what I know that the Holy Ghost is going to do. And some of you are going to see it for yourself. You're going to see it for yourself. Am I right, Pastor Mark? Those of you that are still in the congregation and you have once been a single mama, would you lift your hand real quickly? That's tough. You made it, didn't you? You're still here. You made it. These are strong women. I know some of them, they're strong. These bad, these bad mamas right here. I know. But God's going to bless the house. Husbands, if you can do something for your wife, I don't care. I don't care if all you can buy her is a blow pop. I want you to go get her a blow pop and a popsicle today. I just, and if you can't afford to do that, see me after the service and I'll make sure you can afford to go get them a blow pop and a popsicle. A good one too. Don't give them that cheap Walmart brand popsicle. You don't know the one they like with chocolate all over it. If they don't like it, bring it to me. I'll eat it. I love you. I know I preach hard to you this morning, but I preach you the truth. And I know what God wants to do in your family. And I know what he wants to do in your life. And I believe he's going to do it. Kim, would you stretch your hands towards these people with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, my wife and I, we just pray over this congregation. We bless them right now, Father. I pray that you make their home an amazing imitation of your church. I pray that you would align it with your word. I pray, God, that you would bless it. I pray you would financially provide, spiritually provide mentally and physically provide I ask you to do it in the mighty name of Jesus I pray you do it for your glory and I give you praise for what you're going to do in this house and I know it'll be because of what you start in the home God do it for your glory I pray drive back every force of hell and all rebellion that comes against the people in their house Lord I give you praise for it today in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah love somebody before you go God bless you this morning.